All right. Uh, I said that I'd do a out at box once I finished it review and uh, that's the chin up there it is that's the Italieri uh, chin up HC2 CH-47 F1 in 48 scale uh, I built it uh, and it turned out all right actually not too bad at all a uh, couple of issues that I need to go through uh, just in case you've got this kit in box uh, and you're thinking you know maybe you want to try it a uh, couple of issues that uh, that I can talk to you about because obviously when you're building when you've got this kit in stash and you think I'm gonna have a bit of that then uh, you know a couple of pitfalls uh, that you need to be wary of uh, I've spoken to a couple of guys once I posted on that I was gonna build this kit uh, so, some of the lads have said oh you know watch for this and watch for that uh, and that's great uh, because it just helps you along no end so I, I do and I, I do a sort of like finish review so once I've finished building some you know I'll post on and and then you can take it for yourself and so with the aid of the instruction manual because when I'm building the kit sometimes you know if if I if I come across a bit of a part a bit of a worry uh, I'll, I'll make a I'll make some notes in in instructions just so that you know uh, <clears throat> page one and two I've covered everything in, in in uh, inbox review, uh, I'm not a big inbox reviewer, but uh, feel free to go and have a look at that. That'll be on YouTube somewhere, YouTube land. So let's start on section one then. Section one, that's uh, that's inside your office, uh, and I talked in the review about detail uh, and one thing or another, uh, and how parts can look really nice, but actually when it comes to do the fit, you know, do the fit. Uh, it's got it's got to fit together, hasn't it, to make it look something like uh, office. Uh, a bit of a firewall that seemed I've written okay, okay. They seemed all okay, uh, but the seats when it came to put the seats in now on instructions it tells you to build the firewall up uh, and then put your seats in and put your firewall in and one thing or another. I've dropped a bit of a clanger there because I put the firewall in and then when it comes to putting the seats in, uh, my holes were drilled, I'd done them, I said that in other video, but it, it's really fiddly, so just a top tip there, when you come to do your office part, put your seats in, then the separating bit that separates, you know, the uh, the crew uh, from the bag of machines inside, the floor pan that all went all okay, drilled the holes in and again, I said that there were three versions on this uh, particular subject uh, an RAF version which is the one that I went for an American one and a, and a Japanese one uh, I would suggest that before you start gluing bits of plastic together go to back at instruction manual and, and have a look uh, have a look at which version that you want to do because it's a great kit as far as parts are concerned but because there's three different versions, the specific holes that you've got to drill uh, for different antenna, different aerials and one thing or another. And I said originally I was going to do version A, which is RAF version. Uh, and then a bit later on in the video I said that, you know, knowing my luck it would turn out to be a version A, B, C at Abaca, uh, which it partly did to be absolutely honest. So uh, I've brought my glasses, uh, that's the stem. So I can't really see what I'm doing. Uh, sinkhole, rear of seat. So there was a sinkhole at back of seat. Again, that's no no drama. Uh, but the, there's uh, the once you've got your seat, there's a little rib section and two uh, support sections that your seat sits into. Very very delicate, uh, fragile, delicate, susceptible to breaking. When you're cutting them off the sprue, I said on other video that the gates, the sprue gates were really thick and they are. Uh, you've got to have, I, I, I've literally gone through all 10 blades building this bloody thing. Uh, because every time you've got to have sharp blade to cut some of the bits off. Uh, decals on seats for seat belts, uh, I didn't bother in end. Uh, I, I saved them, I'll save them for something else. Another one in 48. Onto your instrument panel. All that front end, what I noticed was 
once you've got your floor pan and your firewall in all that front end so your seats your control stick your rudder pedals absolutely all that so i left it all out uh initially don't think i left it out i left it all out initially because you can continue with rest it build before that you have to concentrate on that now i painted it all uh, i painted all bits and bats on spro and you know they're just ready to cut off and put in and that's what i did uh and I, I top tip that i would definitely do that again uh seats they ended up being red uh because that's what color they were uh, especially on this rdf version so any issues with seats yeah <clears throat> i'm just a normal model builder and sometimes you know i get carried away and you can get carried away i'm sure you do it's not just me uh and when i say carried away i mean eager you're eager aren't you? you're eager to crack on the seats as one of those areas where you can't you can't crack on once you've glued it put it to one side and let it dry and you know you've just heard me say that and you think no well of course i'll let it dry but you, you let it dry for sort of like 10 minutes and then you pick it up and you think yeah that's all right no let, let, let it dry get half an hour an hour let it dry absolutely solid the holes that you have to drill out uh, make sure that they're big enough as well so on your seats the the actual sit part that it sits on that the, the crew sit on uh, the holes that you have to drill uh, make sure that you use a big enough drill and not, again that sounds really stupid but uh if you make the hole too big the the pins that are in the seats like that fall through the holes if you make them too small it just don't locate right uh and then you end up with splodges of glue one i, I give me send that one before i thought you know what i, I better get right size drill out of here uh, so we'll come back to office in a little bit and again part two on the back end here it shows you to put the uh, the what, what do they call them the wheel struts uh, that the wheels sit on you don't need to put them on uh, right at stage two that's ridiculous because they're going to snap off they're not fragile they're not brittle but they're going to get knocked and they're going to get banged leave them off you don't need to put them on so covered front end uh, in in you know sort of temporarily uh, and those those wheel housings uh, the sides then <clears throat> so I'm going to start offering up now so the sides yep yeah, uh, and I talked about all that detail that were great and I had to cut those support struts out as I mentioned before uh, now on section four it tells you to put the ramp rams in don't bother you really don't need to i kind of knew that i wasn't going to do that uh so i held off uh and, and again it's one of those things that if you follow instructions which you know a lot of sort of like novice builders do or younger builders do you put those rams in at that point they're coming out they're going to snap off so you don't need to put them in <clears throat> section five was putting this uh, so once you've got your seats in and you've put your side walls on again i'll just do that look section five down at bottom okay so once you've got your seats and you're coming to put your sides on and you're gonna come and put your roof on uh now it's showing you the door open position uh i'm gonna put my finger on that uh you'll have to excuse me hands because i've just finished work uh, I'm just going to put my hand there on that roof. Can you see where it says uh, door open position? You don't need to put that on just yet. The Chinook door, I asked the question and I went on Google because I thought that, you know, some doors are sort of like, like a door out there in a house. It opens that way. Uh, but this particular door, once it's closed, to open it, it comes up and over. Uh, you can't see it on my version because I've got it facing this way but basically I left the door off put the glazing in masked it off mask all from from inside and outside painted it primed it painted it glossed it deckled it uh, and then just put it in my little bits bin because that's one of the last things that needs to go in so you don't need to do that if you're having door open you're absolutely fine 
Section 6 uh, showed drilling all your holes out for all your different versions, so I followed that, that were all okay. Section 7 were putting your domes, uh, your dome windows in and your flat windows in. Uh, and again, there's different glass, different types of glass for different versions A, B and C. Uh, that all went all okay. Section 8 for your rotors, there's uh, a little bit that goes inside uh, with a protruding little stem. Make sure that you super glue that in because again, you know, it, it'll push through if you don't. But I didn't have any problems with that. Uh, section 9 was your exhaust fitting your front glass canopy and again you don't need to do that right now because up to then I hadn't even finished the office off all your engines uh, and then section 10 was some more hole drilling and again you've got to just remember uh, th the three versions I know I'm labouring on about it but A, B and C just make sure that you know which one you're doing uh, the ramp, uh, what a funny old state of affairs the ramp is. I'd, I'd finished Osprey not so long since, I'm, paint, I'm pointing up there. Uh, I'd finished Osprey off. The locating pins, uh, they're absolutely solid. You can put them in, there's no issue with them at all. Uh, but you don't need to put the ramp on at that stage. The ramp was one of the last things that I put on actually. I cut it all off the sprues, painted it, did, finished it off and, and again I put it in my bits bin and again section 11 is showing you now then it's a funny thing this if you remember in video 1 I said it was a tube within a tube and it is so you've got the floor pan then you put your sides on then you put your ceiling on right that's on inside but then you put your outer shells on right uh, and they they're, they're up at top like that and they come down the sides but if you just have a look at section 11 the actual belly can you see up at top there so the belly comes separate and I thought that's just gonna give me a right headache now as it turns out it didn't it were as sweet as an up tiny tiny little bit of filler but uh, no, no drama and section 12 <clears throat> it shows you to put the uh, the hooks and the hoisting again I'm going to offer it up for you down at the bottom of the page I can't see down at the bottom of the page there look nah nah you don't need to do that section 13 putting wheels on again no didn't bother with that uh, left that until further on in book uh, section 14 showing you to put all your little aerials on down at the bottom look can you see all that the section 14 no you know what's going to happen to them i know that you're probably thinking well actually mark if you'd have put your bloody wheels on and you'd run this and you'd done that then all the aerials would have been safe this kit this subject should i say there's this there's a little sort of like uh i don't even know what it is somewhat protruding off its side it makes it really difficult where you can hold this kit that when you when you're in the middle of building it once you've got this on and if you've got wheels on and you've got your ramp on and you've got you've got nowhere to hold it to to paint it and you know sort of start sanding stuff down you just so you don't need to do any of that so it's almost like we've jumped from section eight which is putting sides together and then put your belly on but then you can forget all about literally section 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14. They're in wrong order, in my opinion. You might have built this kit and thought, what's he on about? They're in wrong order. I followed instructions, it was absolutely bang on. In my opinion, it's in wrong order. You can leave all them little tiny little bits off until later on in build and when i say later on in build i'm talking about you finished it you know you painted it painted it glossed it deckled it weathered it and everything then you can put all that you can put it on all after section 15 again we're all under belly with different aerials so i left all that i moved on to section 16 which were them chaff dispensers uh because they're quite chunky them 
decent size decent shape uh no sinkholes very little flash everything went together okay glued on all right a uh, little bit of mm, do they go there you know you, you start having a look and you start having a look at reference photos and thinking what wh why is that there why are they so close together surely that needs to be there pointing this way and not that way uh, and again you've got to make your own mind up section 17 again was all aerials and even these little things here i'm pointing like you can see because i know you can't uh in fact i'll show you up up there and look it's it's telling you to put these little aerials on front are you off your head not a chance mr atelier it's just not happening is it but again you've got to think on you know there's experienced builders there's builders with common sense and then there's people that i'm not being disrespectful but they might think i want to build a chin up and you follow this instruction and you know three or four days into it you're gonna have stuff just snapped off so just be careful what you're doing section 20 was the engines uh, and the, the, the oh my god them cowlings i just you know i put it off and i put it off and i put it off and actually it was the last thing that i did those engine cowlings i've done absolutely everything else completely built and finished it but these tiny little things here uh it's like a dome and inside it, it's got a mesh now you do get the mesh you get two sheets now section 20 <clears throat> i'm going to offer it up up at top can you see there's a i'm going to need to point to it there look can you see that little diagram there now that would suggest to me that you would lay your mesh over that and draw around it or put tape around it or whatever you need to do and cut it out that size meh, meh, mile off absolute country mile off nowhere near big enough so <clears throat> i didn't uh, yeah I, I started i started to panic a little bit because i'm thinking christ above i'm wasting all my mesh here and even other night when i'm driving home i'm thinking i'm not gonna have enough mesh what am i gonna do i'm gonna have to buy some tights i'm gonna have to buy some stockings or something because <laughs> you know it's like what what alternative can you use can i use uh can, can i use that sort of you know that mesh stuff the the steel the mesh aluminium i think aluminium uh, the meshy stuff is that i'm gonna have to get a pen out and sort of like cone it round and because it's such an awkward shape in the end i just had to bite the bullet like i say we're all finished and i come to do the cones and i painted them black uh just thinking well black you know and uh the arms i'll paint them same green or same gray or whatever that, I, that i've done kit but in the end i left them black when it come to the mesh uh the biggest tip that i can give you is to get a sheet of paper get the cone and just sort of like look at the shape and it's a very very fragile part there's two of them obviously one part one stab very very fragile now they're so fragile one of them actually snapped uh so i had to get some gorilla glue and, and sort of fix that it, that worked uh but you would look at where where you're gonna glue this mesh on inside because the the shape if you've got this kit go and go and get them combs out go and have a look and you'll be like ah, i can see what you mean the, there's no real subs, substance substance to to glue the mesh on and and i'm not kidding oh it said thrash tackle and i and i tackled it and i put it off and i tackled it and i put it off and off and off and off and in the end i actually considered not, not even meshing them up i mean bing how bad is that but you have to do don't you because that's what it says so in end i bit the bullet and i did it on paper i, I used a sheet of paper and a pair of scissors and i kept i, I got a i cut a, a square out a rectangle out and i offered it in and then from outside i got my marker you know my biro pencil and i sort of drew inside the hole uh and then i, I made that a little bit bigger and, and cut that and it still will not big enough uh and then the the middle section the, there's two bits of mesh there's one that goes this side and there's one that goes this side 
uh, the, the centre strut where you've got to sort of glue that mesh. You want it to be like that, but at end you overlap it. You have to overlap it because there's just not enough meat on the bone to put that mesh onto. Just if you're going to take it, if you're going to take it on, just have a look at that a little bit because it, it's you know it'll proper do you nothing. Section 21, uh, well this little bit here at, at, at top, uh, I'm not all fair with what Chinooks are, I just, I, I love the subject, I think they're cracking aircraft, but it's all, it's exposed, it's open, you can have it, you can, there's two, two bits, four bits for that, a pair that clamp, a pair that close and a pair that open, uh, and again I said it before, because it's a feature I went for open version, uh, Oh, nice. it, 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 no drama. Section 22 tells you to fit, uh, well, I mean, got to talk about out of sequence again. It tells you to fit these little ramps here uh, that, you know, vehicles go up and down on section 22. And again, you're like, what? Why, why on earth would you put them on then? Section 23, now, I mentioned in the preview video that the rotor blades that the 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 because the the flat obviously flat rotor blades and the taper to a thin end and then they've got that you know that mechanism on that sits on that sort of thing and i said on that video they look like they're gonna snap and it did one of them did uh you know you you go through all kinds of things and you're like right tell me a glow get it on splodge it on no not a prayer right super glow super glow you, you know, you see adverts on telly of blokes sitting in a chair on a wall that's been super glued to the wall. Won't do that. Uh, so in the end, Dougie Tucker, shout out, Gorilla Glue. Uh, left it, left it, and again, I've, I personally, I've got to, I, I can get carried away, I've said. Glued it, left it, and I left it for a day. Uh, mwah, solid as a rock. Gorilla Glue. Section 23... Uh, so once you've built your little rotor housings there and it sort of sits on a disc uh, You'd be familiar with that and then it's telling you to attach all your aerials now. It's this here uh, And again on your instructions again, I'm going to offer it up. So can you see there look? Let me just point there right So you can see that and it's giving you options and there's different options on version a B and C uh, and that's why mine is a version Abaca. The, I think it's a, an antenna. I'm not on. Don't don't write in. I, I'm not sure. The ver the the antenna for version A does not fit. The there's some little uh, sort of brackets. They like uh, they like bra yeah well the sort of shaped like that. Uh, and, and it's got a jaw on it like that and, and the thing, the antenna sits inside once you've got version A antenna and you slot it into those one, two, three, four, five retainers uh, the actual antenna don't reach the body, don't fit now <clears throat> I looked and uh, maybe I, uh, do I need to cut a little bit off these bits or do I need to shorten them? Do I need to lengthen this bit? Just don't fit. So uh, went with uh, an alternate version on the aerial. All right. Don't show me. Uh, and then we got onto section 24. And again, I said on my preview that I didn't need to do any of that because it was version C. So are you following me? So up to now, I've built it. But I haven't put none of the aerial on yet. The ramp, the wheels, the front end, the antennas, the rotor blades, they're all off. All I've got is basically the shell. Then, after I've done all that, then I did the office. So, again, I put the chairs in, put the instrument panel in, put the rudder pedals in. It was all pre-detailed, it was already done. Uh, I did do that in sequence. Put that in, come to put the canopy on now. <clears throat> preview video. So I said on preview video, look at the size of this canopy, it looks great. And 
get your detail inside because you'll be able to see everything and one thing or another. And I sort of laboured on about how that canopy uh, looked great. It had got raised detail and it had take a wash and this and the <laughs> square peg and round hole. It, it's one of them that because there are so many different components on making this it, it's got to be true the fit has got to be true it's got to be straight down body and everything all your cutouts where you know your sides go on and your roof goes on and everything if you don't line those up properly when you come to put your canopy on the front won't fit now i took my time on building this and I thought I'd done a pretty good job. But you start to question yourself on, have I done that right? And I know I'm not the only one. And then at the end you start to look at the part, don't you? Because you think, well, it ain't me. Uh, and in this particular case, it wasn't me. It was the part. To put the glazing on the front, let's say, for example, if you sort of PVA'd it down the starboard side, when you come to fit it right other side, it's played out, it just won't fit. So, again, you're thinking, you know, clamps and tape and all sorts of stuff, and you, it, you've got to glue it and leave it, and then it, even after a day, I sort of like peeled masking tape back a little bit, and I thought, well, that's got to have held it, and it went doing. I hadn't held it, PVA. Uh, so, again, it's, uh, you, you start looking and you're asking questions, and you're thinking, what sort of glue can I use now on this because last thing I want to do is fog canopy so I put question out to a couple of lads and said uh, the only other alternative that I've got I've run out of super glue but I have got this Gorilla Glue Gorilla Super Glue uh, and it's done a great job on rotor so maybe it's just a small dab just to, you know because last thing you want to do is fog, fog your canopy uh, fog my canopy not massively you know it's not like it's you know like a shower curtain uh just on other side it's one tiny little panel but it has fogged it okay so after i've done all that put my front end on uh, still haven't got me uh, rotors on i'd still not got the cones on primed it uh the the detail on the actual kit how long have i been going there 28 minutes uh, the detail on the kit, I, I knew from our oh, outset it would take a wash and it has its techno wash brilliant. Uh, and when I say I don't I don't lather it on, I'm not one of them people that, you know, gets your paper towel and starts rubbing it like vigorously thinking this ain't working. Uh, the beauty of that flory wash, I've done other videos, pin it in, it'll go in recess panel lines and then it's <laughs> wipe it off. So, once I'd primed it, I did it in Tamiya XF71, I don't use primer, I just use Tamiya paint. Uh, and then I chose uh, the grey and green, and you can see that there. I looked at the green version, the olive drab version, that was just not for me. Uh, I'd seen other people make this kit, uh, make this particular subject, and I just I love this green and grey. If you get the green and grey right, they complement each other. Uh, you can't go for like a pea green, a lime, you, obviously. Uh, you, you've got to get your greens right, uh, your greens and greys right. So in end, I went for an olive drab, a Tamiya olive drab. Uh, and uh, I think an XF64, which was uh, a dark, I might be wrong, dark sea grey. Might be a medium, might even be a light, can't remember. But those two colours, they really, really complement each other. Uh, as far as uh, sanding stuff down, uh, just uh, the, the top uh, part, uh, I had to sand that down ever so slightly. Tiny little bit of filler, but no great drama. Uh, and that came together all right. So I painted it all, uh, glossed it all. I, I'd already added these little sort of like uh, light housings and one thing or other, and uh, this sort of dispensing thing here. And, and everything and I'm into build now uh, rotors were a different subject like I said because one of them snapped so I had to sort of fix that and put them to one side at this particular point I've still got these intakes to see to and I'm thinking 
I mean, it's a, it's an all right build. Don't get me wrong, uh, but but there's certain little things that you'd have to watch out for. So uh, all the uh, glass were all uh, done with mascol. I didn't bother with circle cutting tape out. I just lathered it with mascol. That that works a treat. Uh, glossed it, deckled it. Now the decal sheet. So on your decal sheet, uh, you would think that sort of like number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I, that just absolutely does my boxing because at that particular stage in the build you've glossed it, you've painted it and everything's really cool and you know you want to get it deckled up don't you? Top tip. So get your scalpel out, get your cutting mat out and what I did was I cut all my decals out in sequential order. Uh, so I found number one, I cut it out, I put it on my bench. I looked, found number two, cut it out and put it at the side of number one. So then I got uh, like six or seven blocks of 10 decals, one to 10, 11 to 19, 20 to 29, and you just go across. Then when you come to decal it then, and you probably go off your decal map, which is what most of us do. So it looks familiar, doesn't it? You've got all them little sort of pointy bits all telling you which one. So. For deckling, I started at front, I found number 28, and obviously because I'd lined them in in bunches of 10, I know where 28 was. Well, it's not in first row, that's 1 to 10. It's not in second row, that's 11 to 19. So number 28's in third row. And it, you know, let's not make it hard. Let's, let's not make it hard. The initial work, you've got to put the work in, but then it just makes it easier. Okay, as far as the walkways are concerned, uh, I said on preview video that I was going to paint them on, and I did. Uh, decals uh, seemed all right, uh, but no, you you know stuff like that. Painting them on, uh, all all the decals went on really really nice. Uh, absolutely no problems with that. Uh, and that pretty much after my flory wash then that sort of concluded the build uh, the rotors uh, uh, that had stayed solid uh, I finally tackled uh, these engine cowlings at the front and got the mesh uh, and sorted that out you put your ramp on you put your attachments on you put your wheels on you stick all your antenna on underneath uh, let all that dry it's all sorted uh, and then you final, you know, you put your rotors on and it's job done. Uh, version A, RAF version. 45.50 quid this kit. I said that previously. Is it worth it? I'm not really sure. Uh, you can <laughs> you can tell, can't you? Because if it was, uh, definitely. Uh, is it worth 45 or 50 quid? Mm, I'm not sure. So I'll ask this question, would I build that kit again? Would I go to its shop tomorrow and spend